All right, let's talk about Benghazi now, the second headache that we're talking about for the administration. By now, everybody knows the basics of the story and what was supposed to be slam dunk testimony on the Hill last week. A lot of people saying that there's no there there, they on the president's side, and among them, the president himself. Who executes some sort of cover-up or effort to tamp things down for three days? So the whole thing defies logic, and the fact that this keeps on getting churned out, frankly, has a lot to do with political motivations. All right, so the president says the critics are all about political opportunism here, trying to score points, but those critics, they're not buying it. By definition, a cover-up. And we have had a, a massive cover-up. Without, quest without question, there was a political cover-up. Okay, others, though, including a sitting Republican senator, have gone even further, calling for a special prosecutor with subpoena power to investigate. So, the question is, once and for all, was the administration's reaction to Benghazi a cover-up or otherwise intended to mislead the public two months before a presidential election? Or, just possibly, could this be post-backs and political opportunism looking to turn the president into a lame duck a little bit early here, um, earlier than even normal for a second term president here, let alone also, um, you know, throw a little bit of mud here at Hillary Clinton, then acting, then Secretary of State at the time and presumptive 2016 uh, Democratic candidate, if not nominee. Okay. Rich, I'll start with you this time. Argument is the story's changed. Uh, forget about the Sunday morning Susan Rice uh, talk show appearance. Since then, they point to more documents. They point to people at state saying that, listen, this thing was scrubbed. Al-Qaeda was removed here. Uh, this is all an attempt during an election season to change the story because it was a story that wasn't I good for the that's administration. that's what we did in election seasons. Look, the, 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 there were four people killed in this thing. The responsibility for those mistakes, the, be it the president, the secretary of state, the Congress, which cut funding for security, that's legit stuff. The notion that an argument about what, how you described it in the chaotic immediate aftermath amounts to an impeachable offense or a special prosecutor, it's more of the same, it's, it's more birther stuff. It's more attempts to make him illegitimate, not just well, wrong and unpopular, but illegitimate. Well, before it's I, not going to stop. It, it, to that point, it's Tea Party nonsense. Congressman, to what that it point, is. this is something I really didn't get, which is uh, I agree with Richard that somebody, um, if there was a failure here preceding the attacks and there should be accountability, so be it. But what I never understood was whether they thought that it was a spontaneous reaction or an attack by al-Qaeda after, and that's how it was communicated, to quote Hillary Clinton, what would the difference be? Ooh, What's the political it. game well, between the two? I would have loved to have been at that hearing. I would have said, excuse me, it doesn't matter who killed them? No, that's not what she said, Chris. She said it didn't matter. What, she said it mattered who killed him. It didn't matter how you described it in Talking Points two days later. Let's be clear about what she said. Okay, um, that's not my recollection, but let's say even if you're right. The bottom line is this. Mortar shells began the attack. That's not a, you know, a spontaneous attack on the embassy. Uh, the administration knew it, but they told a different story. Uh, and um, where I think we lose credibility. Here's is my your question. Let's say I agree with you. Okay? okay, I'll even give credit. I don't know that the administration knew they were wrong. From my, my reading of the TikTok and the Times today, you had intelligence, uh, you had the CIA, you know, the State Department, and you basically had uh, so many different entities all trying to agree in the fog of the aftermath. They couldn't, so anything that wasn't commonly agreed to got shunted to the side. But let's say you're even right, that they knew it and misstated it. I still don't get how that makes it their argument better or worse four Americans were still dead and whether it was some idiots that reacted to a video or people that planned this from al-Qaeda well I mean it doesn't okay, change that four Americans are dead why would that be a bad reflection on the White House well uh, to say it was al-Qaeda on Sunday first morning. off the White House is continually maintained that we don't have Islamist terrorists uh, they don't want they don't want to promote and connect Islam with terrorism that's their policy um, and I think this attack kind of illustrated that maybe we do, contrary to their mm -hmm. view. So I think that was one of their motivations. Um, the bottom line for me is uh, we had people that maybe could have rescued them. 
and you know why weren't they rescued? There's a lot to the story. So I'm, I'm agreeing with you on this point. And where I agree with you is that by our Republicans trying to go after the president and, and, and the secretary of state, uh, instead of saying, let's just learn all the facts, all the facts, and then come to a conclusion. But Chris, a distinguished Republican, Thomas Pickering, a yeah. man you know, right. went out and did a report and said there's nothing to the story of a cover-up and whatever bungling what went on with security should be handled. You know what? He may be found wrong. That's the sad thing. But no, based but no, on but what? Based on four diplomats who basically said this is what we told them. And the argument that he didn't include Hillary you know, and, Clinton and, in the original, and, and, he didn't make her testify, and, right. and he also didn't interview other yeah, State Department. But, 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 no, but also I should say one thing, and Andrew, you can jump no, in after this, which is just, just one point. Leon Panetta, who you respect, and no, he never said that our guys could have gotten there in time to save him. Well, he said the idea that Tripoli to Benghazi in well, the aftermath what? sounds good, but uh, it uh, just wasn't regionally doable. I would have liked to see them try, you know, to defend our diplomats. The point I want to make, though, is to have these diplomats under oath come and say what they said. D diplomats don't usually try to go that far, so they really felt it. A couple of points. First of all, the only person who's in a position to determine whether military force can be used to attempt to rescue uh, diplomats who are under assault or not as the President of the United States. Whether you have people from the State Department or the CIA or the military saying maybe we could have done something, it's still a call that goes to the Commander-in-Chief. And I think we're getting into some risky areas well, so when, we, when we question the decisions of the President of the United States in what is uh, a potential and no, was that's not, recognized. That's not risky. It's not risky. Our troops could have gone there. They didn't have to be so far away. They could have gone there. And I, then I, I, seem, I seem to recall a lot of Republicans saying criticism of President Bush for prosecuting both the war in Iraq and the war in Afghanistan was somehow disloyal or somehow un-American. Or, well, that, or, or that's, somehow that's not an argument. They shouldn't have no, done that. But it's, you're, you're talking to the wrong guy. But he, a, a, couple, a couple other points. This, we heard about the talking points and the change in the talking points. What never changed in those talking points was the, asser, the assertion that this very well could have been and may well have been an act of terror. And there seems to be some dispute as to whether act of terror equals terrorist it act. I, I think we're splitting hairs there. And the original topic was the special prosecutor, which to me is just trying to bring back the late 90s, which ground the Clinton administration to the halt with a wide-ranging special one? prosecutor. Chris? Uh, you know what? Do I trust this administration to get at all the facts? No. So that's why you what have What crime has been committed that calls for a prosecutor? Yeah. What, what is the alleged... Assume all your facts are right. correct. What's the crime? And, and, and that would be the trigger? Well, yeah, if you're going to... You appoint a prosecutor to prosecute a crime. Right. Um, well, are we criminalizing uh, uh, so, so, political so, activity So here? this is where I, I... What I wrestle with is terrorist activities not committed aren't crimes. No, 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 no. What did the White House do that requires right. a special prosecutor to look at what the White House did? Yeah. If your facts you are correct, you may what's be the making crime? A, you may be making a good point. But then who do we get who can really be honest with what happened? So maybe it's just Congress's responsibility. Well, if there are sane people there, that would be a good thing. Yeah. But, but, but we, in the end, we've got to know the facts. It's all right with me. I thought we would have been done with this story, honestly. I, I don't. And, and, and you know and, what? And, and I know Mr. Brodsky, this week. Mr. Brodsky is going to rip my head off on this one. But I, I agree with the congressman. I, I think that there are too many unanswered questions over Benghazi. I, I really do. Well, if anything, this week seems to have borne out here that this issue um, has got legs. So, And, and he's right. The, 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 four, or the four military personnel from Tripoli, I believe, they should have at least tried to get them there. Even if they didn't make it there on time, you should have tried. Because we don't know what could have happened. And, and not use them unless the president said yes, but right. they'd but be in place. Really, that's really dangerous because then you're that's talking about military the, movements. But the and Secretary of Defense said it wouldn't work. But they, why not try? They, because they made a decision that there is, there's no such thing as a no-cost military venture. They, they may have been wrong, but mm -hmm. the notion that we're talking about this as though somebody made some fundamental failure of policy or some fundamental criminal act is where this, this is the... the the weight of repeated false allegations. And this is what happens in politics. And also, they gain the credibility because they're repeated. What would the motivation be of any administration, let very alone clear. this one, to not want to say four of their own? But it's very clear. I'm in the middle of a re-election campaign. I don't want this, this hassle 
uh, with Romney Ooh, trying and, to tag and, and, me on this. Me I needed to go thing, away, and I needed to go but away if, now. If I that were the case, but if that were the case, then you would have sent in the troops yeah. and done everything you possibly no, no, could to I, save No, but it's the same kind of problem that happened in Iraq when we allowed the looting of the Iraqi you know, antiquities. We didn't want to engage uh, the Iraqis in a conflict with Americans. So, yeah, they probably didn't want to but engage. But using that as an example, that was an error in judgment. Um, and it, history certainly said... And it cost them one. It certainly was a cost one, but I don't think anyone ascribed motivations, I certainly didn't, to then-President Bush and, and team that they did this out of political calculation. I just think they didn't plan the thing properly. Um, and didn't plan for the aftermath. They it's, thought we'd be celebrating. Mistakes happen. It's the move from mistakes and bad judgments to conspiracy and crime that this story is all about. And what, the, what the, your former colleagues in the Congress are trying to do is make... Uh, take it, uh, right. cause a political toll yeah. for what should be well, a discussion about I want to get to our next debate here, um, and we're already heavy on this. And so when we come back, we're going to talk about something that we had a pretty good debate on as well here, and it has to do with the Associated Press, who is livid right now at this administration because the Justice Department gathered phone records of reporters from that news agency. Emphatic sound from the top lawman in the country today, plus to all these scandals earned what Richard scoffs at, but many people say are a typical second term blues here. And is there a way out of it? And if it is, where should they go? You people. That's right. We'll be right back. Thank God I got some.